Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, you know the secrets of our hearts. You know what each one of us is going through, and we pray that as we hear your word, that you would continue to assure us of your presence in our life and heal our wounds. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Dear friends of Jesus, our Savior, compassion is a godlike attribute. On the athletic field, we try to teach our children fair play and sportsmanship, but compassion doesn't make the cut. In our court system, what do we want? We want justice. In our homes, we teach the concepts of love and peace. We strive to build, build communities where people are loving and kind to one another. And hopefully, for our country, we all want unity. But where do we learn about compassion? We've all heard the word compassion, but what does it really mean? It means more than feeling sorry for someone, because I think if you ask someone what the word compassion, they would say feeling sorry for someone. It's more than caring for someone. And it's even much more than just trying to understand the needs or troubles of another person. I suppose many people will come up with different definitions of compassion, but the one I like is very simple. Compassion is me having your pain in my heart. Years ago, a farmer was plowing during the spring thaw. There was mud, there was water, driving into one particularly wet place. The farmer's tractor got stuck in the mud. And the harder he tried, the deeper he was stuck. He finally walked over to his neighbor's house. I'm guessing the neighbor was a farmer as well to have the equipment to help him. And he asked for assistance. So the neighbor came over, investigated the situation, shook his head and said, well, it doesn't look good, but I'll tell you what, I'll give pulling you out a try, but if we can't get your tractor out, I'll come and sit with you in the mud. Compassion is sitting in the mud with a friend, having his or her pain in your heart. Compassion is what Jesus had for the crowds that day on the Sea of Galilee. The disciples had just returned from their missionary journey. It was exciting. It was exhausting. The demons were cast out. Troubled souls and sinners were called to salvation. Jesus' message was so successful that the disciples were bombarded by needy people. They had no time for their for themselves, they had no time for prayer, they had no time to visit, they had no time to reflect, they had no time to eat. With compassion, Jesus makes a suggestion. He says, come with me by yourself to a quiet place and get some rest. So the disciples with their Savior set out for a much-deserved retreat. So launching the boat, they head away from the crowd. It's now a time intended for rest and relaxation. It would have been, except for one thing. People on shore could easily identify Jesus, plot the destination of his boat, because again, the Sea of Galilee isn't that big, and quickly be on the other side of the shore to welcome them when they dock. So imagine the scene. Jesus and the disciples, they, they get to the beach. They are greeted by a great crowd. And we know how many because later that day, the Lord miraculously feeds 5,000 men. You add m women and children, and the crowd could have easily been 10,000 people. 10,000 people expecting. Well, they didn't know exactly what they were expecting. But what we do know is Jesus had compassion on them. Now, it's amazing Jesus had compassion on his disciples. That's why he said, let's get away and get some rest. After that, he had compassion for the people, but not one bit for himself. 
I say it's amazing that he had compassion for his disciples and he had compassion for the people because the verses right before our text, Mark records the terrible martyrdom of John the Baptist. Jesus' cousin was murdered. Not only that, Jesus calls John the greatest person to ever live. Luke chapter 7, verse 28. And one of the few persons who recognized that Jesus was Messiah and Savior. And so now the forerunner of Jesus, the one who had been preparing the way so that people could be ready for the Messiah, could be ready for Jesus, was gone, brutally and unfairly murdered. Certainly Jesus would have been torn by such a personal loss. But Scripture makes no mention of Jesus asking for sympathy. And Jesus, instead, Jesus, as tired as he was, as in mourning as he was, as worn out as he was, he had compassion on every single one of those 10,000 people. He doesn't say, come back another day. He doesn't explain to them how he needs a, a much-needed vacation. He doesn't push the boat out and sail for another part of the lake. He doesn't even tell them that, haven't you heard? John the Baptist was killed. I need some time alone. No, Jesus had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Now, it's not that God didn't provide shepherds or leaders for his people. He did. Unfortunately, most of the shepherds or the kings that we read about in the Old Testament, they weren't worthy of the title of shepherd. Most of them were destroying and scattering God's sheep instead of tending to their spiritual needs. Now God's people in the New Testament, they're living under the reign and rule of Rome, which isn't good at all. And worse yet, then the leaders of the church, the Pharisees, are burdening God's people with more laws and regulations that were impossible to meet. So God's people, they continue to be people without a shepherd. You see, the truth is God's leaderless people were in pain. Think of all the pain that Jesus saw when he looked into the hearts of all those people. The Lord of love had compassion on the mothers who just buried their infant children. He was touched by the widows and widowers who mourning the loss of a lifetime companion. He felt the sadness of a man who's maybe losing his business. He felt the pain of a mom and dad whose children had wandered, a teen looking for acceptance, and those who were then burdened with demons and sickness. The Savior felt the pain of those who had been ruined by wagging tongues or were un accused unjustly. No matter what they were going through, no matter what they were feeling, no matter what's going on in their life, whether anybody knew it or not, Jesus had compassion on them all. That's amazing, isn't it? Because he can have compassion not just on 10,000 people, he can have compassion on the whole world, and he did. In the same way, Jesus has compassion on us. He carries our pain in his heart. God, in compassion, searched the Garden of Eden for our fallen ancestors and then promised them a Savior. When the children of Israel cried out because they were in, under the yoke of slavery in Egypt, God delivered his people. In fact, the Bible is a continuous record of God's beautiful and brilliant compassion in action. God had compassion on his people, not because they deserved it. They didn't. He didn't have compassion on them because they earned it. They hadn't. God had compassion on them because he had their pain in his heart. And once more, Jesus has compassion for you as well. Just like he did for the people in the pages of Scripture, Jesus has your pain in his heart. Jesus had your eternal pain in his heart when he lived under the law for you perfectly in your place. Jesus showed compassion for you when he spent his life searching and saving the lost, including you. Jesus had compassion on you when he called you by name and made you a member of his family 
one of his flock in the waters of baptism. And Jesus continues to show compassion on you by promising to be with you, never forsaking you, and listening to all your prayers. All these things Jesus does, not because you're the best looking or the most well-behaved or better than others. He has compassion on you because he sees how totally and absolutely lost you are without him. And so my friends, what burdens you today? As well as I know many of you, as close as we have become over the years, I can't see the pain in your heart. I can't see what you're feeling today. And you can't see what I'm feeling as well. But Jesus can and does. He knows those hidden hurts, those wounds that you keep secret from everyone else. He knows the pain in your heart. He knows and he has compassion on you. And once more, as your shepherd with divine power and might, with resurrection power, he wishes to heal those hurts. They're important to him. Don't think that they're too large for him to conquer. Jesus, who has already defeated death and won eternal life for sinful humanity, he can conquer your problems as well. And don't think they're your problems are too small or insignificant for him to consider. He who knows the number of hairs on your head will also deal with all the other details of your life. Large or small, he has your pain in his heart. Large or small, Jesus has compassion for you. And once more, let Jesus, through God's word, because he is the word, heal you. Cry out to him and let him know exactly how you feel. Cry out to him in all your pain and trust him. Trust him that he sees you. Trust him that he hears you. Sit at his feet. Sit at the feet of Jesus and let his word fill the void of your life with his peace and his joy. Let Jesus, through his word, take your pain away from you. You see, he wants to heal you. Because he has compassion for you. Therefore Jesus says to you today in 1 Peter chapter 5. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. With compassion he says to you this morning in Matthew chapter 11. Come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And with compassion, Jesus says to you in John chapter 14, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You see, just as Jesus subjected himself to ridicule and heartache and abuse, torture, even death on a cross, he did that for all your sins. In the same way, in a similar way, he's sitting in the mud with you, with, his pain, with your pain in his heart. Therefore, let him deal with it because he already paid the price. Let him deal with it because he has already suffered the pain for you. Let him deal with it because he will bring healing to your soul. He will bring healing to your soul through his word, his word that brings healing. Ultimately, through his word, by his spirit, he will take away your pain. He will take away your hurt. He will give you his peace because our God is a God of compassion. And because God has had compassion on you, you are now able to have compassion on others. Second Corinthians chapter 1, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. So what happens? God comforts us. We then comfort anyone with the same comfort we have received from God. In other words, the comfort we have received from Christ then flows over into the lives of others, even in the midst of our sufferings. And that means even our sufferings or the difficulties and the challenges that we're going through, God is using those things to work good, not only 
in our lives, but also in the lives of other people. It may not always feel like it. It may not seem like it, but he is. Just think of St. Paul. Think of what he went through. The encouragement that we read in Scripture. He writes all kinds of encouragement. He writes so many letters to the people. He's encouraging them. He's teaching them. But all the things that he wrote in Scripture, all the things that we have benefited as well, were written while he was being persecuted and while he was suffering. And yet he could still speak of the grace and love of Jesus Christ. Because the suffering that he endured didn't compare to the comfort that he received from Christ. Even though he was being persecuted, even though he was suffering, the Holy Spirit was working through him and he was comforting others with the comfort he received from Jesus. And it should be the same way with us. Because not only do our sufferings, as we look to God in his word, bring us closer to Christ, but then they also give us opportunities to comfort others. So who is someone you need to sit in the mud with? Who is someone whose pain is in your heart? It might be someone who's far away. It might be someone you don't even know. Pray for them. Maybe even try to reach out to them. It might be someone who is near. Again, pray for them, but then Spend time with them, sit with them, often not saying anything, just listening to them. Show them that you care. And then when God's Spirit prompts you, share God's word of comfort with them in Jesus. Let them know that there's hope. Let them know there's forgiveness. Let them know that there's a God who loves them and is with them. You see, that's what our world needs to hear today. People are angry. People are divided. People are quietly hurting inside, not letting anyone know. People are lonely. People are confused. People have lost their way. People need someone to love them and have compassion on them, just like Jesus has for you. Therefore, because Jesus has had compassion for you, filled with his spirit, you are now able to, to show that same compassion to others, that they might see Jesus, that they might have his love, his peace, and his salvation. May God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you saw us in our condition, that while we were still sinners, you sent your son Jesus to die for us. You saw that we were hurting. You saw that we needed a Savior and that without you we could have nothing good in our life. And so, Lord, we thank you that you have brought us into faith, that you have given us faith in Jesus Christ, and we know that through him we are saved. But, Lord, we also know there are people hurting, people struggling, people doubting uh, what's going on in the world and the circumstances that surround them. And so, Lord, we pray that as you have compassion on us, help us to show that same love, the same peace, and the same hope that we have with others. Help us to share Jesus so that people may know him and be saved. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.